Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome and thank you everyone for joining us today for another edition of Digital Globe's webinar series. My name is Camille Cassidy and I'm Senior Manager of Product Marketing at Digital Globe and your host for today's presentation. Before we get started, here are a few tips to keep in mind while viewing today's presentation. All attendees are on mute. To ask a question, use the Q&A chat box feature that is located at the right-hand side of the screen. Attendees have the option to view today's webinar in full screen. To view in full screen mode, please click the full screen tab located at the top of your screen. And lastly, a link to today's webinar recording will be sent to everyone via email within the next 48 hours. The topic for today's webinar is NV Image Analytics on GBDX. This webinar will be presented by Rebecca Lassica and Adam O'Connor. Rebecca is Director of Enterprise Platforms and Partnerships at Harris Geospatial Solutions, and Adam is the GBDX Product Manager here at Digital Globe. Welcome everyone to the webinar. Um, today we will be discussing our geospatial big data platform known as GBDX. The GBDX platform provides cloud-based access to Digital Globe's image library along with powerful analytics uh, to extract meaningful insights such as material identification, land cover classification, and temporal change detection. GBDX includes a growing ecosystem of automated algorithms from a wide variety of business partners. One such business partner who we are extremely excited to be working with is Harris Geospatial Solutions, who have made their NV advanced image processing software available on GBDX. Harris's NV Task Engine software is made available to GBDX users in the form of 153 image processing tasks that can be executed individually or chained together into unique analytical workflows. To conclude today's webinar, Adam will discuss the different ways a GBDX user can run NV Analytics. But to start today's webinar, I will hand it over to Rebecca Lassica from Harris, who will present an overview of Harris's analytical capabilities on the GBDX platform. So without further ado, yeah, let's introduce Rebecca and begin today's webinar. Rebecca, it's all yours. Thanks, and Thanks. You know, I couldn't echo more how mutual it is that we're excited to be part of the GBDX platform here at Harris Geospatial Solutions um, and part of this webinar, so thank you so much for hosting and having us. Sure. So today, um, just to give you a brief agenda outline of what we'll cover, um, really we'll just give a high-level MV overview, uh, talk about what is a task, why the GBDX platform and go through some examples. And there are three key takeaways that I really hope everybody gets out of this today. One is really to understand what is an MV task and how it exposes the power of MV at scale. Um, the other is really to understand how unleashing this power next to the archive of digital globe imagery on the platform is so powerful. Um, and lastly, really, why do you care? What does it mean for your business? So I really hope that everybody takes away some of that um, from this presentation today. And with that, we'll just jump in. So for any of you who are not already familiar with Harris Geospatial Solutions and Envy, Envy really is our flagship geospatial solution for image analytics. And um, you know, really, Envy is used all over the world for the processing and analysis of multispectral and hyperspectral imagery, as well as LIDAR and SAR, and really any remotely sensed data from satellite imagery or satellite platforms, or even manned and unmanned platforms as well. And these algorithms in Envy really make up our analytics that are used uh, to solve problems uh, and on GBDX at scale. So again, in this presentation, I hope that you take away and leave with an understanding of the power of Envy and really what it means to have it deployed at scale. Mm -hmm. To give an example uh, before we jump into it of some of the industry solutions that we've deployed and the markets that we serve, here are a few. 
um, applications ranging from things like yield prediction for precision agriculture to maybe monitoring and managing critical infrastructure for utilities applications or even transportation, um, extracting actionable insight from imagery for defense applications. These are just some of the areas where our analytics are used in production every day. And worth mention is that our user base includes the image scientist and train analysts, and also professionals without remote sensing experience who are experts in their own domain. And this really is made possible by the ability to expose these analytics as automated workflows on platforms like GBDX, which we'll get more into as we go. So like Camille introduced, at the very core of the technology, we have what we call MVTasks. Um, MVTasks uh, are geoprocessing units of work. We've got 153 of them right now exposed on the GBDX platform. Um, and they can range from various things like classification algorithms to raster thresholding or other pixel manipulation tools that you might need to get some information out of your imagery, um, to full workflows like thematic change detection and things like that. Digital Globe, I have to say, has done a great job to not only expose these tasks on the platform, but they've also taken care of a lot of the things in the background to ensure seamless integration and that you all as users um, have a great experience accessing these analytics. And that includes things like passing around the metadata for you um, and providing the ability to chain these tasks together, which is really going to enable exposure to a, a multitude of um, problems that you can solve, really infinite possibilities um, once you get into it. So before jumping into details, just to make sure you get that main takeaway of what is an MV task. So an MV task, you can think of, like I said, as a, a discrete geoprocessing endpoint. It's capable of ingesting and processing any of the data that is, is exposed on GBDX, and that includes the whole digital globe archive, um, the WorldView 2, WorldView 3 imagery, as well as other data that is exposed on the platform, like Landsat um, 8 and Sentinel-2, um, and any other data. So anything that Envy can ingest, we can ingest and process on the platform. And then again, by way of a REST API or Python API, which Adam will get into at the very end of this um, presentation, or even using the Envy modeler, which I'll touch on briefly, these um, these utilities really enable us to chain these tasks together on the platform, and your workflow might include a myriad of MV tasks as well as maybe some digital globe tasks you can mix and match to really get that fit-for-purpose analytical workflow that's going to solve your business problem. So I'm going to jump into some examples, and um, you know, really the examples that I'm going to focus on are some that are out there on the platform today. There are many different ways to access these analytical workflows on the platform, and I'll touch on them a little bit, um, and Adam will go into some more detail. Um, but I want to uh, just outline the user experience for you, some applications that we've deployed on the platform, and then I'll also include some examples of things that MV Analytics are used for today to extract information from imagery like I just outlined. So I'll go through both types of examples. So the first one that I want to outline is one of the analytical workflows that we have exposed on the platform called NV Port Change Detection. So this workflow was actually developed um, with a, a need for monitoring activity of large vessels within a port. Digital Globe's data has um, great availability in terms of accessing different times. And so you can use that as a monitoring service to look at changes over time. Um, you know, and in, in this case, we're going to look at the change between two times. We used about um, a little more than half a dozen NV analytics within the workflow, and they're listed here, and chain them together so that when the user accesses these analytics, they're really just clicking a button or running a script. Some of the ways to access these analytics and the way that something like MV port change detection might be exposed could be direct access on GBDX through the answer factory as a recipe, which I'll show. 
We've also got access to these analytics as GP tools in the ArcGIS Pro environment through the Imagery Plus Analytics subscription, which I think that Adam might um, touch on. We'll highlight a little bit more detail um, at a later time. Or directly through a REST API or Python API that I expressed that Digital Globe has put out there for everybody to use um, and access these analytics. And so there's a lot of different ways to access these analytics. The way that I'm going to show you um, for the MV port change detection is um, through an answer factory recipe. And without getting into too much detail, but one of the follow-ups that we'll send um, is a link to our new capabilities in NV55, one of them being the MV modeler. So if you're not a programmer, you don't want to get into writing code for REST API or Python API, but you want to change some MV tasks together to deploy on the platform, we provide a visual programming interface that we call the NV Modeler that enables you to do just that and export the model uh, directly to Python code or what we call a meta task that can run on the platform. Um, so again, we'll send a link out to how this works, but this actually is a model of the port change detection task that um, I'm about to show. So the first thing that we do when we are helping a customer, what you might do when you are developing your own workflow to deploy on GBDX, is identify your area of interest or uh, what area you want to look at, monitor what type of imagery that you're looking um, for for your particular um, problem or, or solution that you're looking to, uh, the problem that you're looking to solve. So here you see a port. We normally will grab some um, data or imagery and do some prototyping first. So one of the things in Envy that's really powerful is the ability to customize um, your workflow as well as set a large variety of parameters in a workflow that enable you to fine tune what it is that you're trying to do to really get those fit for purpose analytics um, exposed and, and able to run. So here you see on the left, We've done some workflow development for port change detection, prototyped it in Envy, looked at the inputs, the outputs, the parameters, um, got things the, the way that we wanted them to run for the particular application. And then on the right, what you see is some Python code using the GBDX tools on the Python interface that Adam will get into to write a script that we can develop and deploy onto the platform so that people who may not have image processing experience or the experience writing code can access through something like Answer Factory to click a button and get their answer. And that's what you'll see here. So once those analytical workflows are exposed on the system, the user can log in, go to their area of interest, select an answer, and in this case you see the Harris NV port change detection algorithm is selected and run the workflow. Where the output is going to be at the bottom, you see a list of vector output delineating the changes in the scenes that were selected for analysis. And then the user can go from there um, with getting their answer down off the platform. So the second example that I'm going to show is, is similar. This is actually um, one of the analytics that we expose on the platform that is suitable for a change analysis, and there's a temporal component to this, where the, the customer's problem or the question that is being answered here is, is there vegetation regrowth in a mining area because there are mandates that there's a certain rate of vegetation regeneration after any land scars or things are happening to the land um, in the process of developing this new um, mining um, environment. So we call this one the Envy Land Reclamation Vegetation Change Analytic. And it does just that. It takes in some scenes and it calculates over time is the vegetation regrowing. And then eventually that analyst or the person using the system can get a sense of um, not only where and how much vegetation is regrowing and quantify that, but really look at that time component due to the availability of the archive of data um, on the platform, enabling these types of temporal analytics. Again, um, several MV analytics used, 
they're exposed here for you guys to see. And again, you can access these analytics in many different ways um, through the REST API, Python API. This one we did the same way where we prototype. Um, on the left, very far left, you can see a scene there. Um, this was actually a, a GOI scene that was um, found on the platform. And some time series was found over the same AOI. The solution was prototyped, developed, and then deployed on the platform. So it's really kind of as simple as that. Um, get into a couple of other examples of some of the analytics that Envy brings, because remember one of the takeaways is to really understand the power of Envy and what that means with digital globe data. <coughs> so the next couple of slides, I'm going to outline a couple, um, a few examples of some of the other things that we do with Envy Analytics and digital globe data. And starting on the far left, what you see is a map of, on the, on the left side of that is the image, on the right is an analytical product, to map crop residue. And what's interesting about this slide is that we um, ship and expose on the platform spectral indices to do various things like this crop residue mapping. And right now we ship 67 different spectral indices. And of the 153 analytics um, that are mentioned that are exposed on the platform, Spectral indices is one of those. And within spectral indices, we've got 67 indices exposed. So hopefully that gives a sense of some of the power behind MV um, and what we can do. And the other thing of interest here is that the indices that we expose, they're tested by scientists and vetted. And we're constantly adding um, to those specific to data vendor um, value proposition, in this case, Worldview 3 having multispectral and SWIR um, information <coughs> available, we're able to expose some indices to calculate things from the data specifically um, to, to expose indices that are appropriate for the data. So um, this is just one example of that, but it, it gets pretty powerful in terms of things like land cover mapping, um, agriculture, as you see here, as well as things like mining applications or urban change or, or things like that. So our spectral indices are pretty powerful. Uh, going on to that middle image, what you see here is, again, another spectral analytic. But the takeaway from this one is that we are, um, I mean, we pride ourselves actually on being quick to expose and ingest um, and support new data formats. And so you see we've already got World V4 analytics exposed in MV55, which is our latest release. Uh, right here, what you see is a World View 4 color infrared image on the top and a green optimized soil adjusted vegetation index <laughs> output product at the bottom, which really measures greenness. So um, World V4 is supported already, and we try and stay ahead of that game. Um, on the right, what you see that we can also expose on the platform is actually already there is the ability to take some of our spectral analytics, some of our more advanced analytics, to do some mapping based on the spectral information that's part of the value proposition of the high spectral resolution of digital globe data. And what that means here is, as you see kind of in the bottom left there, um, that plot of, of those lines, those are spectra. We ingest um, and expose spectral libraries directly on the platform so that if your, um, your solution or your workflow needs to expose things like spectral angle mapper or any kind of supervised spectral classification technique, you can do that on the platform um, directly by using this, this type of a capability. The one that we're looking at here is a Worldview 3 scene that performs a spectral angle mapper classification of urban materials. So differentiating between things like um, asphalt and solar panels and um, different colors of rooftop, bare earth, and that sort of thing. Um, so completely doable on the platform um, and something that we're, um, we're pretty excited about. A few other examples. We have developed uh, a workflow using WorldView 2 multispectral imagery and a combination of some indices 
to do some spectral object detection. And so, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about deep learning and machine learning object detection, which we can do. Uh, but also, sometimes a spectral approach can just be really quick and easy and um, easy to configure and expose. And that's what we've done here for pools. It's a little bit difficult to see in this um, image, as I'm kind of looking at it myself. But we did find in a single scene uh, about 5,200 pools and did some uh, analysis on um, accuracy. And we were greater than 88% accurate. Uh, using the spectral approach just kind of out of the box without the fine tuning. So I, I was pretty impressed with that. A um, couple other examples, water quality mapping. We have some MV workflows that um, characterize the quality of water, again, based on the spectral information. This is a WorldView 2 image. Um, and you see kind of a um, blue to red indicating the level of quality, red being um, you know, maybe there's a, a water quality problem in that area, in that river. Um, and then I do want to highlight that the MV Analytics exposed on the platform, while the digital globe imagery being of high spatial and high spectral resolution is really suitable to MV Analytics, um, there's also MV Analytics applied to other data exposed on the platform, like Sentinel-2 and Landsat-8. Um, right here, what you see is a time series of several Sentinel-2 scenes over time to go through an analytical workflow that characterizes vegetation density and vigor along corridors like highways and or um, utility corridors and that sort of thing. Um, so spectrally, we can expose all those sorts of analytics. OK, so getting a little bit into project-specific analytics. Digital Globe has done an excellent job, again, on documenting how to use our NV tasks on their platform. I believe this link will be sent out in the follow-up, so you guys don't need to write it down. Um, but you can access all of these analytics and develop on your own, just like I showed in uh, using the Python API or the REST API um, to develop these analytical workflows. If you need assistance from us, we're here to help. Please work through your Digital Globe account manager um, or contact person, and, and they'll get us involved. And we're really happy to help and support whatever it is that you need on the platform. To follow up on that a little bit, um, some project-specific analytics that we've done and can do, we have a whole professional services team here uh, at Harris Geospatial where we can help you develop proof of concept applications and even go so far as to develop production level workflows that will deploy onto the system on your behalf. And then you can run the workflows on the system. And so we really do want to work with you to help you succeed um, and learn what we can do to support you. So um, you know, definitely, again, work with your Digital Globe contact person. Um, but we're here to help. What you see here is just a proof of concept that we did in a um, wine growing region using some agricultural analytics to uh, identify developing hot spots in a field. Um, so this is the kind of um, prototype workflow that we're well equipped to do. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, one of the coming soon things is that we have been working on our um, deep learning technology for several years now. And we're really excited that we will be exposing uh, what we call mega, some mega classifiers. And these are our deep learning classifiers on the Digital Globe platform. Um, our deep learning technology is based on convolutional neural networks. And we take our expertise and, and domain experience with image and, and analytics for multispectral and hyperspectral data. And we apply that domain knowledge to our deep learning technology to really extract some robust information. Um, what you see here is a Harris Mega Suburban Structure Identification Classifier. Um, we are, uh, we'll document everything for everything that we put out on the platform. Um, but we strive to achieve greater than 95% accuracy with very low recall. And we have done some benchmark testing um, that really 
does confirm that these solutions for feature extraction are anywhere from a 15 to 25 percent improvement over traditional uh, classification methods. So if accuracy is high on the list of your project requirements, this could be a really great approach. So we're really excited to have this coming soon um, to the platform on GBDX. And then finally, before I turn it back over to Adam, um, I want to just let everybody know you can learn more. And, and we're doing a lot of things together with Digital Globe at our NV Analytics Symposium this summer. We would love to have you attend. We are actually giving out a promo code of GBDX that if you register uh, as a result of attending this webinar, we're going to give you a bit of a discount on registration. It's open now. And again, this is really a thought leadership conference where industry leaders come together to talk about problems that we can solve together um, in collaborative ways. And I think that the way that we are partnering with Digital Globe, bringing NV Analytics onto the GBDX platform is a great example of that type of collaboration. Um, really hope that you can attend. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Adam. Um, to get into a little bit more of the technical how-to on accessing NV Analytics on the GBDX platform. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Rebecca. That was awesome. And uh, we'll pass it over to Adam. Thanks, Camille. Yes, my name is Adam O'Connor. I'm the product manager for the GBDX platform here at Digital Globe. What I wanted to do is, is briefly give you a, a high-level overview of the different ways in which NV can be utilized on the GBDX platform to tap into some of the analytical capabilities that Rebecca just gave you an overview of. So first and foremost, GBX subscribers, so customers who subscribe to GBX, can optionally choose to purchase access to those 153 NV tasks that are available on the GBX platform with the NV Task Engine software. Currently, we have NV version 5.4.1 deployed on the platform. We're actively updating to Harris's latest version of NV, which is 5.5. Uh, I believe it came out a month or so ago. Uh, we'll roll that out on the GBX platform in the coming weeks, and that'll actually increase the number of NV tasks on the platform. Uh, it'll add an additional dozen or so uh, analytical capabilities. In addition, moving forward in the future, we hope to enable free trial access to NV tasks as part of our GBX evaluation plan as well. Uh, that's something that we hope to, to roll out in the next few months. So you can come to the GBX platform, sign up for a free temporary evaluation plan program, and experiment with those NV analytical capabilities on the GBX platform to process both digital globe imagery and some of the other third-party data content that we've made available on our platform in the cloud. That includes some of the Earth on AWS data that Rebecca mentioned earlier, Landsat and Sentinel-2. Uh, we also have some RadarSat-2 data uh, from our parent company, MDA and Maxar. And there's several ways to utilize Envy on the GBX platform. So I want to give all the attendees a high-level overview of the different ways in which Envy is exposed on GBX and the ways in which you can utilize Harris's analytical capabilities. As Rebecca mentioned, we've documented all of the individual Envy tasks on our documentation page called GBX University. And one of the ways GBX users can utilize GBX and the various algorithms on the platform is via our REST API. So we have a REST API for the workflow system, which allows you to run either individual NV tasks or chain them together into unique analytical workflows. So this is an example of a JSON definition that could be passed into our REST API to execute one or more NV tasks in sequence on various data content, all powered by the cloud. If REST APIs aren't your cup of tea, we also have a library called GBX Tools, and that's basically our Python API. So if you're familiar with Python scripting, this will allow you to execute, again, the NV tasks in sequence uh, running on various data sets that we've made available on the GBX platform 
from a simple, easy to use Python scripting interface. In addition to APIs, we also have a variety of web applications for tapping into the power of GBX. One of the, the new exciting capabilities that we want, launched just late last year is something called Notebooks. This is basically our Jupyter Notebook interface for data scientists to tap into the power of GBX and interactively run algorithms and analytical capabilities within a web browser interface and perform interactive data science. So since the Envy tasks can be executed via that Python library that I just mentioned, we have a Python kernel running in this notebooks interface which allows you to execute the NV tasks within our notebooks environment. In addition, we also have a simple, easy to use web application called Answer Factory. This allows you to zoom in on an area of interest, draw an AOI, select what we call an answer, which is basically an algorithm to execute on that AOI, and get the output processing results viewed within a nice, easy to use web application interface. So several of the Envy powered analytical workflows that Rebecca mentioned earlier are loaded into this Answer Factory web application as well. Here you see an example of the Harris Envy port change detection being one of the answers that you can select from within this web application interface. And last but not least, we also have an integration into ArcGIS. So if you're an Esri customer and an ArcGIS user, GBX, we launched a new product offering a few months ago called Imagery Plus Analytics, which provides a native integration into the ArcGIS desktop and enterprise software systems that allow you to tap into the power of GBX. This includes accessing Digital Globe imagery and running algorithms directly from within ArcGIS software ecosystem tools. Here you see an example of the ArcGIS Pro desktop application connected to GBX where an end user can actually run an NV analytic directly within the ArcGIS software environment and get the output processing results loaded right into their ArcGIS enterprise system. So with that, that is a summary of how you can utilize NV on the GBX platform today. Great, awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Rebecca, for your informative presentations. Um, we also really appreciate the um, active chat conversations that have been going on uh, during the webinar. Thanks, Nigel from Harris. Um, but now we're happy to answer any additional questions that you might have from today's presentation please go ahead and type them into the chat box and we'll answer them as they come in. Uh, I think I saw one uh, a few moments ago, someone was asking, uh, could we talk more about hazard mapping, how it's built, how it's classified? Sure, do you want me to take that one? Uh, sure. Okay, sure. So yeah, there's many different types of hazards. I can only venture a guess um, what you might be referring to. Um, but in general, um, you know, NV analytics are able to do a large number of different classifications. So a lot of times with hazard mapping, the approach will be to take the image um, or set of images and what type of hazard are you mapping? Is it a, a water hazard? Is it um, some kind of a land cover? And perform various classification techniques to um, identify what that is and then either delineate or qualify or quantify um, and, and locate where those hazards might be. So if you want to give a little bit more information, I may be able to be a little bit more specific. Um, but in general, that's, that's usually the approach. OK, terrific. Um, let's see here. So um, I think another question that might have already been addressed, but we'll give it a shot again. So um, referring to the um, NV task modeler, uh, can that be extended to other imagery uh, besides Digital Globe, like IRS, Cardosat? Um, and if you can can expand on that a little bit more with the modeler capability. Yeah, sure. So um, the short answer is yes. If if Envy supports the data, which chances are it does, modeler can be used. Where the images 
really a, on ingest and the NV open process, they become what we um, kind of identify as NV rasters. That input can be input to models that do some various things, you know, whatever it is, like you saw the chaining of the tasks together. What could be a little bit different in a model, depending on the data coming in, is some of the parameters might be different. So, for example, if there is um, if there is some feature extraction going on that has something spatial in nature, and you're working with a half meter pixel versus a two and a half meter pixel, the thresholds might be a little bit different for different data in. So, while the workflow could be very similar. Um, sometimes those parameters can be optimized depending on the data coming in, but the answer is yes, as long as Envy can read the data, we can ingest it and it can be run through a model. Okay, perfect. That's great. Um, another question here for Adam. So um, is GPDX open for innovation contributions from users, uh, specifically uh, around Answer Factory? Uh, yes, absolutely. So one of the, the subscriptions that we have for, for GBX is, is known as the developer license. Um, so in addition to coming to the GBX platform and running pre-built algorithms that are made available, there's also the ability, if, if you are a developer, to either utilize our standard task framework and, and build your own task, such as we've built with the Envy Task Engine, and load those into GBX and run them in the workflow system. Uh, in addition, that notebooks interface, uh, the Ju Jupyter Notebooks web application that we have on top of GBX um, is also a, a very nice interactive way to basically write arbitra arbitrary scripts and codes and have them interactively execute on the GBX platform and, and interactively see the output results, uh, tweak your code, modify, prototype, test, uh, and then eventually deploy to the, to the platform. So, uh, both uh, utilization scenarios are supported. Excellent. Okay, uh, another question here for Adam. Uh, do we need additional Envy li licenses for executing GBDX within ArcGIS Pro? Uh, yeah, I typed in a, an okay. answer on that one. So that is the, um, uh, the Imagery Plus Analytics product offering that I mentioned is a, a, a separate subscription. Um, but it, it comes with a, a GBX uh, subscription along the ride with it, so you get to do um, everything that I just mentioned, but you also get uh, the ability to tap into the power uh, of GBX from the, the ArcGIS uh, enterprise ecosystem. And does that also run um, in ArcGIS Online? Um, no, it, it's, um, it's not up on uh, the, the public ArcGIS Online uh, cloud-based staff. It's more meant for uh, within your organization um, if you utilize ArcGIS Enterprise within your, your company, your university, um, or your organization. Uh, that's where the access is exposed. Okay, great. Um, another question here. Um, uh, is there a release date for the mega deep learning, and will that functionality also be exposed through GBDX? Yeah, Becca, do you want to? Oh, yeah, sorry. go go ahead. It will be exposed yeah. through GBDX. Yes, yeah, definitely exposed through GBDX, and we're shooting for a release this quarter. Um, we don't have an actual specific date, but our goal is to release a set of pre-built classifiers onto the system this quarter. Okay, great. Um, another question here um, from Victor. It says, will we be able to train the CNNs, uh, the neural nets? And I don't know, is that referring to the uh, mega or maybe we can get some yeah, clarification from Victor. I think he's asking if they'll be able to train the convolutional neural networks mm -hmm. themselves. Right now, our plan is to um, launch a set of pre-built classifiers that we train, so the answer is no, not at this time. Um, definitely interested in, in hearing more about that request from you to understand the need. Um, but right now, no, we're, we're going to be developing and deploying the pre-built classifiers. Okay, great. 